In our review of the Raspberry Pi 400, we tore down the device and discovered that it wasn't just a Pi 4 Model B underneath the skin. In this video, we take a closer look at the differences between the two variants and help you decide which one's best for you. Let's start with the most obvious difference, the design. The Pi 400 is a new take on Raspberry Pi form factors which makes sense for a broader user base, especially those primarily seeking for a desktop experience. The body feels very sturdy and the keyboard itself feels decent to type on. The array of ports is generous on both devices. The Pi 400 has a 40-pin GPIO header, a micro SD card slot, two micro HDMI ports which support up to 4K at 60 frames per second, gigabit Ethernet, USB-C power input, two USB 3 ports, and a USB 2.0 port. In addition to those, the Pi 4 also has an additional free USB 2.0 port since it doesn't have a keyboard, as well as a DSi display port and a CSi camera port. More importantly, it also has an audio jack, which we think the Pi 400 would definitely benefit from. And of course, the Pi 4's form factor is significantly more compact, which probably makes it a bit more versatile if you're planning on using the device for your projects instead. The Pi 400 features a completely redesigned board which allows it to fit inside the Pi keyboard-like shell. In fact, you might find that this board is more appropriate for your project, if you're willing to take it apart. What's more is that although the Pi 400 shares most of its components with a 4GB variant of the Pi 4 Model B, it actually boasts a revised version of the Broadcom BCM2711 quad-core Cortex A72 CPU which is clocked at 1.8GHz instead of just 1.5. Fortunately, the Pi 400 is equipped with this monster of a heatsink to handle the boost in clock speed. We ran some stress tests using Stressberry to determine how big of a difference it made and the Pi 400 blew the Pi 4 out of the water in terms of thermal performance. It's not even close. When idling at 600 MHz, the Pi 400's temperature sat at around 32 degrees Celsius, while the Pi 4's was closer to 50. And when running under maximum load for 10 minutes, the Pi 400 and Pi 4 peaked at around 49 and 80 degrees Celsius respectively. Keep in mind that these numbers are with the Pi 400 running at 1.8 GHz against 1.5 GHz for the Pi 4. Very impressive. What's the cost of these improvements, you ask? Well, the Pi 400 is pretty good value, coming in at $70. Only 15 more than an equivalent 4GB Pi 4. And if you were to add, say, a Pi keyboard to the mix, that would bump the price of the Pi 4 up to $75. Now, sure, it's very likely that you already have a keyboard lying around. But factor in the cost of a case, and maybe even a set of heat sinks and a fan to improve cooling, and you're looking at around the same price. And bear in mind that the Pi 400 would probably still outmatch it in terms of thermal performance. The benefit of the Pi 4, however, is the choice of RAM. It's available in three variants at the moment, with 2, 4, or 8 gigs of RAM, with the 2GB version costing as little as $35. Now that is an absolute bargain. But one thing's for sure, we're spoiled for choice and there really is a Raspberry Pi suitable for everyone. And we hope that this video helped you identify the one that's most appropriate for you. Thanks a lot for watching, drop a like if you enjoyed this head to head, subscribe for more content like this, and as always, keep dialing pixels.